My name's Bob McCormick, and I'm an artist living in Schuylkill County. I work primarily in watercolor, and I'm trying acrylics and oils these days, with a little bit of frustration. <laughs> what got you into painting? Uh, about 15 years ago, a friend and I decided to take a class down at the local Votech in painting on a Monday night with Wendy Francis, who was a delightful and talented artist. And uh, I, I had worked for many years as a performer, and I, had, and I could no longer do that because of some physical problems, and it ended up painting suited my per personality so much better. And uh, you could be quiet, and you could do it by yourself, and you know, when it, after the work's done, you bring it to a show and just show it, and you don't have to worry about hitting those high notes. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. I found myself late in life, at age 50. <laughs> what is it about your art that moves you? Uh, I really love watercolor, and I love, like, putting the paint on and watching it blend and what and the vibrant colors. You'll, if you show some of my art later, you'll see it. I use a lot of vibrant colors, a lot of geometric shapes. I mean, I'm exploring, I'm constantly growing, trying to do something that's new and that, that makes my life rich and happy. Mm -hmm. And it, it also, it allows me to tell my story and, it, and it's also a way for me to kind of express my love to the world. I know that sounds kind of corny, but that's yeah, it's, it's kind of simple. That's it makes me happy. I hope it makes you happy. What inspires your art? What inspires my art? Years ago, uh, I was at a workshop, and the teacher said, "Paint what you love. Paint what you know, of course, but paint what you love." So I thought about what I love, and I, I love an odd collection of things. I mean, one part that's not odd is I love my family. Uh, so I've actually, and I, but I avoid figures, I avoid painting people because I don't know how, because I don't have any formal training. So I've tried to do some of that. I also, like, I love the hillsides and, and, and where I live. And so, so if, if, when you see my work, you'll see a lot of playful shapes and images and bright colors. And, and it's, you know, that is what drives me. And recently, by the way, recently... I wrote this book, Almost Touching. It's a collection of 42 pieces of my work. And I started it as uh, at the request of a, of a friend. And they said, we don't have enough walls. Can you put things in a book? I thought, well, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it right. So I, I worked on it for about 14 months. and. Mm -hmm spent the money to have it bound in hardback so it could become a legacy and uh and in the process of doing it it taught me how much i loved my life too like my even though it was a poor old you know we live in the, the coal region the anthracite region and you know maybe there's not a whole lot looking up sometimes but when you look back at what you had and how hard our parents worked and the values they taught us I realized how much I loved my childhood and loved where we live, mm -hmm. and uh, there you go. How was it working on a book? Any unexpected challenges? The technical end of it was challenging for me because I'm not I'm the opposite of technical. Uh, the 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 actual writing of it, talking about the pictures, that was an absolute joy. I spent months usually in the late hours of the night, like starting around 10 or 11 and work until around two, you know, just like a paragraph or two ends up taking, to get it just right, taking a while. And, and I, I revised things countless times. And the result is that the, the book reads like a long narrative poem with pictures. Mm -hmm. uh, but the technical end of things, you know, trying to work out logistics with the printer because of course I had to pay for all this myself so I was worried about being you know stuck with a whole lot of books uh, by good fortune they've sold terrifically everybody's come back and bought more for their grandchildren so I did really well I'm amazingly happy and grateful so. but the hard part technical for me 
And I understand that's a key aspect about all your paintings, is that there's a story behind all of them. Mm -hmm. How did you come about that? I think it's just who I am. I didn't plan it. Uh, I'm not even particularly sure that if I were to walk through a gallery with you and show you paintings of great artists, that I'd be drawn to things to tell a story. It's, it's not something I thought of, but I guess it's part of me. And that might come from having been a, an English teacher for 30 plus years, that I very much like stories and like, I love, like I read nonfiction all the time. I like true stories. Mm -hmm. So I guess I'm just drawn in that direction. Where do you see painting going in the future? Do you expect any changes in the medium? Hmm. I, I think about that uh, with myself and with the world. With as I look at people who are currently working professionally these days, it seems to me that everything's gone abstract, which is fine. I understand that, you know, that photography's kind of taken over the milieu of realistic mm -hmm. representation of our world, but, and, and art's gone in, in other directions. So I would tend to think, you know, we'll have more abstract work in my own painting. I, I don't consider myself a realist at all, I call myself, what did, what did I make up, uh, modern primitive, because my work is kind of primitive, but there's an element of, you know, modernity in it also, and in my approach, and uh, mm -hmm. that's where I plan to go, and I, I suspect people will continue to explore, and it seems like the more I, I'm out there, and, and your mother will attest to this, Lori, uh, you see so much work, people are so creative, comes from all different angles and trying all different things to reflect their experience, and it's really awesome. What advice do you have for aspiring artists? Hmm, advice for aspiring artists. For me, I, I can only speak for myself, uh, as a routine, some sort of discipline works, even when you're not feeling it. You know, look at it as your work and dedicate at least a couple hours, if not every day. Like, make a routine each week that you can, you know, on Tuesday night, on Wednesday night, I'm going to work for two hours in my studio. And I say nights because most people, you know, you need to have another job to survive while making art. I certainly did, and most people I know do. Uh, but to, and not to be afraid, like, that you have to do it quote unquote right just you know do what, what's inside you make your creation what it is and uh and enjoy it and hopefully someone else will too all right and i understand you actually have a piece here that was worked on by one of your students mm -hmm. this this piece over here let me see if i can move it for you can i bring it over oh yeah certainly this was done when i taught at blue mountain high school one of the kids came over one day and took my picture, and then I walk, walked, a month later, walking down the hallway, I see this picture. Uh, the teacher had actually guided the students through it. She had the class, you know, just work in different segments, and then they, they each did, did painted a part, and then they posted it together, and they gave it to me. So it was really neat. Nice. Yeah, I like it. Is there anything else you'd like to share with our viewers? Hmm. Well... It would be really, uh, we would be really grateful if you would come to Block of Art because a lot of people create a lot of very personal and, and work that's important to them and want to share it with you because if, if you're an artist, if you're a painter, if you're a potter, you know, th there's that half of it where you want to present it to people and you want them to see it and, and to bring their experience to it and to react to it. So if you can, come down to Pottsville for Block of Art and, you know, enjoy the weekend. It's, it's a nice day and it's, it's a, you know, a good time. We will certainly appreciate seeing you. Thank you. All right. Thank you for seeing us, Bob. Thank you, Elijah.